Here are a few stones that I have cut and cabbed in the last couple of days. A lot of this is Royce and Turquoise. And this is a relatively large one. So today I'm going to be talking about backing your turquoise. Why you would back, when you would back, what you would back with. So backing turquoise means that you are putting a layer of material behind the turquoise for a few different purposes. One of those purposes is it is a thin piece of turquoise. And in order to use it in jewelry, it needs to be thickened. So this is a perfect prime example. And this is another prime example. This is a piece of Kingman. It's a thin, thin end cut. This is a beautiful piece of turquoise. So I didn't, didn't want to just toss this away. I wanted to make another cabochon out of this. And so I backed it. Now backing material, the backing material that I use product is JB Weld. This is a quick setting JB Weld. Five minutes is as long as it takes for setting. You can use a, a slow set, doesn't really matter. Um, use whichever you prefer to work with. I would suggest buying one of each if you're new to this and seeing which one um, works better for you. So two different reasons for backing. One of those reasons being because you have a really thin piece of turquoise or Verisite, or whatever it is that you're working with, and you want a jeweler to be able to use this piece. You don't want a super skinny cabochon. Because if this was paper thin, I wouldn't be able to use it in a piece of jewelry. The second reason for backing is to help stabilize a material that is not stabilized. So this is all Roycen natural turquoise, the Roycen that's here on the table. None of this has been stabilized. That means some of this material is relatively soft. And so I added a small layer of backing to this cabochon, even though it's really thick, because it's a softer material. I'm hoping to help the jeweler keep this piece um, in a piece of jewelry or the owner or whoever has it and sets it um, for a longer period of time without it breaking apart. So that's one reason for backing material is to help keep it um, stabilized through the cutting process as well as in the piece of jewelry. So I'm going to take you up here and kind of explain backing as a jeweler. So I started cutting cabs um, as a jeweler first and then became a lapidary person. So here's example number one. This example is a piece of Royce and Turquoise that we backed because this is a soft material. This piece, however, is a stabilized piece of Kingman Turquoise. It is not a soft material. It has been stabilized, but this is a thin cut. So as a jeweler, the thin cut pieces, if you were not to back this piece, this would be an ultimately very thin piece of turquoise, not allowing me to use bezel wire. And this is bezel wire. This is a thicker bezel wire. So these are the two most common sizes of bezel wire. This is a straight edge bezel wire without the serrations. And both of these are serrated with teeth, multiple layers of sharp little teeth. So this cabochon right here, I could use either the small bezel wire or the thicker one. I would use the thicker one. It would look better as well as hold the stone better. But do you see that the bezel wire hides any of the backing material? Same with the Kingman turquoise. So it's important to understand that when you're backing turquoise, the last thing you want is for this backing material to show up beyond the bezel wire. So you can see this is, um, that's a pretty thick layer of backing material, but even with the bezel wire, 
it hides the backing material and only exposes the turquoise. So that is why you would be backing stones for those two purposes and what to look out for and what to be cautious of when you're backing. Now on to the backing process itself and how I back stones. I am at the cabber and I am starting out with a relatively thin piece of turquoise. This is Kingman, you can see how thin that is. It's thicker on one side. I'm going to shape it first before I back this piece. This has been stabilized, that's the only reason why I'm shaping the piece first. If it was an unstabilized thin piece, I would probably give it some backing first and then shape. But this piece is stabilized, so we're shaping first. pieces here that need to be back, backed. So I'm going to take these pieces along with this one that I just carved and we will head back to the bench. Back on the bench with my turquoise pieces. I have this piece that you saw me carve. Now the reason why I don't leave super sharp edges pointy edges on any of my cabochons. I always try to round off the edges, um, even with this backed piece of Kingman that I showed you earlier. See how that's slightly rounded, even though it's a looks like a sharp edge. So the reason behind that is I'm um, just being a jeweler and having experience with having to wrap the stone in the bezel wire and then making a perfectly sharp edge around the stone can kind of be a little tricky. So as you can tell, even this bezel wire doesn't want to sit in a perfectly sharp edge deal. 
So I would need to take a pair of pliers and bend this in between a tooth. So I would find um, one of the gaps in between the teeth and then I would take the pair of pliers and let me grab a pair right here. These are flat needle nose pliers. These do not have teeth on the inside so that I'm not going to mark up my bezel wire. And I would focus, bend it. Do you see where I'm choosing to bend it? So I'm finding a spot right in between the two teeth. And then that's where I would bend that, that bezel wire. That would give me the sharp edge that I would need for this point to go into. And then I could put bezel wire around a really sharp edge. So there's, there's an extra step that a jeweler has to take if there's a really sharp edge on a piece of turquoise. The other thing is if it's a sharp piece and let's say it's not stabilized like this, it's not Kingman, it's not stabilized and a jeweler sharpens the edge, they go to set it in like this. Remember, this is a very brittle piece of turquoise. They could lose the tip just by even using this as a piece to force the bezel wire around. It could cause the tip to break loose. So these are very, um, I don't know. I just, I don't care for leaving super sharp edges on turquoise or any kind of a cab that I cut. This is a good example. This is Royson. See how the edge has been blunted just a little bit. It's not um, super sharp. Here's another piece of Kingman. This is a blunted edge just ever so slightly. This is not finished. I haven't finished this cab yet. So there's the reason for not using sharp edges. Back to backing. This is masking tape. So a lot of people when they back they use um, a layer of tin foil and build a trough, put the backing material um, on a wax. They got a uh, paper wax material that they put inside of the tin foil, and then they're able to set pieces in just one at a time like this into the pile of, of stuff. That is, um, that's one way of doing it. That's not how I prefer to do it, especially with stones that are larger in size. For super small stones, I don't mind doing something like that. Um, but I don't know about you, but uh, JB Weld, this is not the cheapest stuff on earth. So I think I pay six bucks for a set of this. So I really don't want to waste a bunch of it. So this is what I do. I take masking tape. And as you can see, I've taken a razor and I've cut the masking tape in half so that I have thin pieces of masking tape. I take the piece of turquoise, the front side that I want to keep, bottom up, and then I mask around the turquoise. And if you want to do this, I suggest doing this dry. This turquoise, um, I dried out with a, a towel, so it's semi-dry and I just wrap it around the turquoise like that, giving me a trough to put the JB Weld in. So the one good thing about doing this is that your trough is built so that you can have a higher um, backing material on your turquoise instead of just settling with a thin layer. So if you do what I had mentioned earlier and you use a piece of wax paper and then you just go and set in all the stones on the laid out JB Weld, you're kind of at the mercy of how much material is on the back based on how the trough settles. Um, this way I can actually build a back much thicker so I'm going to tape all of these other stones while I'm at it and do a few at a time. This helps with saving JB Weld as well. So each stone gets taped. I 
I know that many of you don't need to know how to mix JB Weld, but just in case, just in case, a little bit of black with a little bit of the gray, the activator or hardener. Try to get it like a half and half mix, and I know that that's probably not half and half, not perfect, but close enough. Um, I don't think it really matters what you mix your JB Weld on. I just have been doing it on tin foil because in that way I can throw it away after I'm done. I use a this is like a butter spreader, I think. I take my piece that I wrapped tape around, oop, and I don't drop it in the JB Weld like that, and then I squish the JB Weld in, rake it across the top, and then set it aside to dry, and then move on to the next one. So if you get the five minute setting JB Weld, sometimes you can run into trouble if you've got a whole patch of these to do. Um, that's when you want to get the, the slower setting stuff, but I've come to really appreciate the quick setting, even if sometimes I wind up wasting some, um, winds up setting before I really want it to. There's another one, and whoa. Helps too if your hands aren't shaky like mine sometimes, especially in the morning. And sometimes when the JB Weld starts to get hard, you want to make sure that you're pressing pressing the JB Weld in. Um, this is still pretty runny because it's fresh. I just mixed up this batch. But sometimes you will find that you've created an air pocket. And as you can see, I'm like pressing this one in, right? I don't want an air pocket between my JB Weld and my turquoise. And especially if you've got like little grooves in the turquoise on the sides, on the corners, this will help fill those, those groove areas. Because remember, you're not pressing the stone in, you're actually pressing the JB Weld into the, the stone and any grooves that are on the bottom. So if you were mixing it the other way, where you mix the JB Weld in a puddle and then you press the stones on it, this is kind of just the opposite, opposite way of doing it. So there we go. And I'm going to empty what little JB Weld I have left. You kind of begin to um, understand how much JB Weld you need per how many stones you've wrapped. And I know this seems a little more tedious than the other way, but here's a good thing. If you make a pile of JB Weld and just plump, 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 plump a bunch of stones into it, you will have to cut that JB Weld um, with a, a little tooth saw or your, your Dremel with a, a cutter, and you'll cut those stones apart, um, and then you'll have to grind around that. So in this case, with these stones, I won't need to do that. I can just unwrap them once they're dry, which I'll show you here in a minute. We'll wait for them to dry, and then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, it's been about five minutes. These are dry and set, and the tape is ready to come off. The easiest way i found to get the tape off is just to tear it and to walk around the stone. Now, by doing it this way, you don't eliminate all of the sanding that you'll need to do. So you'll need to do a little bit of sanding or grinding of this like little line. You'll also just want to make sure that these sit flush. So this one I can tell right now is a little thick. I'll probably grind some of this down. Um, but other than that, though, they're, they're backed and ready to go. Here's the one that I started with initially and remember it doesn't really matter focus 
it doesn't really matter how you you back stones. Um, just remember the why behind it, uh, why it's important to have a stone sit a little higher for jewelers, um, for the bezel wire to go around the stone. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't really matter how you back them. So this is just my way. This is what I found um, to be easiest for me. Good luck. Happy cabbing.